Okay, hello everyone and welcome back to Brickrigs and today I will be showing off some more space stuff. We are here in Bricksville which is a uh, different map, it's like the city map except bigger and not quite as polished. Um, but I'm here, only going to be here for a couple of creations because I'll be showing off more of my space things and we'll be starting off with this thing which is a United States space shuttle. Um, the front is not my best work, I will admit. Um, making anything rounded in brick rigs is very difficult if it's anything larger than 4x4 because that's the only 4x4 rounded thing that we have is a, a 4x4 um, half half sphere like that. So I had to try do my best here in order to actually get um, a, a nose of some sort onto it. Um, yeah, the whole front is not the best, I will admit. Inside though we have got a control setup of sorts. It's not exactly the same. There should be seven seats in here instead of four because um, the real shuttle had seven seats but this one only has four. Though I've added loads of dials up front. Um, I don't know why it's jingling around so let me just pause it here real quick. Um, yeah so we've got two control sticks right there. We've also got throttle levers which is what these are meant to be. None of this is accurate to the real space shuttle I will admit. Um, yeah, none of none of this is accurate at all. I just sort of added in somewhat of an exterior. Um, it was more the exterior that I was trying to get correct. Um, so of course, in the back here, we've got the cargo load, um, or rather the cargo bay. There is a door here, um, which, if I unpause, as you can see, the door does open and close, so you can walk through it. Um, oh, wrong thing. There we go. There is enough room for you to walk through the cargo bay um, to and from. And then from here, if I now sit in the driver's seat, you have got the Discovery, the Space Shuttle Discovery, um, written on the wing with the United States flag. On the other side, you've just got a big NASA flag, or big NASA circle rather, roundel, which is what I've tried to do here. On the side, it says United States with a smaller NASA logo. Um, and then at the back, you've got two orbital maneuvering thrusters I believe is what these are um, up the top and then you've got the three main thrusters right there with a uh, little tail tail fin sort of thing there and then of course you've got the tail plane up top uh, with the rudder um, and yeah so from from the front this is how it looks um, the shuttles obviously weren't designed to take off from the ground they were designed to land on the ground they were shot into space via the big space shuttle um, space shuttle rig so they have the two rocket boosters on the back, etc, um, etc. Et so um, as for controlling it on the ground, front wheel does steer, um, and you control that just with steering, and then it's throttle for the two orbital maneuvering thrusters. And then you can come here to the runway, or wherever you really want to try and take this thing off. It doesn't take off, by the way. It's very front heavy, and I don't know why. Even with all of this engine stuff at the back, it's still very front heavy, When and you'll see when I try and take it off. Um, also, pitch opens up the, um, or oh, sorry, Alton pitch opens up the uh, cargo bay, as you can see. So there you go. If you wanted to put some sort of, I don't know, satellite or whatever in the in there, in the, in the load bay, you can. And then, of course, it can be closed back up again. So, as for actually controlling this thing, um, you use Alt, and then you've got view um, view up down left right will adjust your um, elevators and your rudder and then your ailerons will be controlled with uh, steering left and right and then throttle is um, to activate the main throttle the main thrusters here so as we're ready you can try take it off again I think I've actually got yet yeah, I had a uh, as you can see here we go, if we pause it and take it in. I am going up, however, it doesn't really want to control past this. Um, it's really not designed for... Um, really not designed for taking off from the land. Um, as you can see, I do have a decent um, decent turn. And you can kind of control it in the air. As you can see, we're kind of controlling it, but it's not exactly the most stable thing to fly around in. Um, but still, there you go, Space Shuttle Discovery. Um, there you go. Um, so yeah, that was just the, the space shuttle that I came up with because that was the uh, next thing I wanted to try and do at least uh, of another famous famous thing. Launched 135 shuttle this um, shuttle missions. Two of them ended in disaster with all the astronauts dying. But for those other 133 launches, um, 
the shuttle worked perfectly fine. Um, but yeah, let's move on to the next thing, which uh, strangely enough also contains the shuttle. So here we are, the proper shuttle launch configuration. As you can see, it's got the two boosters on the side, and then you've got a big central main fuel tank for um, fueling the boosters, I believe, and also the throttle, but the, the shuttle rather. But don't quote me on that. As you can see, it has got um, detonators, so you can. It is actually a staging staging thing. And as for controls, it is number pad seven to um, disengage. Action 1, aka left mouse button, to fire the boosters. Middle mouse for uh, breaking the boosters from the fuel tank. And then number pad 3 to uh, disconnect the shuttle from the uh, from the main tank. Um, the shuttle that I've made doesn't actually have um, any landing gear that you can put in. This is all fixed landing gear, so I have had to fix it using the foam fixings onto the actual wheels themselves, which is not accurate, I will admit. But... It works perfectly fine as a shuttle, so we are good for launch of Space Shuttle Discovery in 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 4, 3, 2, 1. And off we go. As for controlling this thing, you can still use the boosters. Um, you still can use the boosters in alt mode, so you can just use the, the shuttle to adjust your angle. And then once you have finished with the boosters, it is simply number pad 2 and then number pad 3, and then you can boost your shuttle away like so. And off they all go. Off goes the shuttle into orbit, whilst these things will fall down, the boosters will be reused, and the fuel tank will simply burn up in the atmosphere, which is uh, all very nice. Oh, so, of course, you can just keep using the shuttle as is. You can try and land the shuttle, but again, it doesn't really land that great. As you can see, we are now spiralling down. There's the, there goes the uh, there goes the things. The cockpit view on this thing is actually fairly decent. Um, yeah, it doesn't really pull up that that well though. The shuttle once you're actually falling like this. Um, nor does it work in space as well. You might want to to keep a note of that. But there you go. Down we go. And I'm not going to show you the shuttle crashing. But we'll just move on to the next thing, which uh, everything else now is going to be taking place in space. So uh, I'll see you there. So the next thing, and the only thing uh, in this video which will be using my lunar surface, is this thing, which is Luna 15. Um, as to what Luna 15 is, it is a Soviet probe that was launched at the same time as Apollo 11 um, in July, I believe it was, 1969. Um, and there were several of these Soviet probes already launched with varying successes, and this, uh, these probes were... Um, sample return probes. So it would land on the surface of the moon, it would take a sample of the lunar surface and then um, make its way back to Earth with the sample intact. Um, lunar 15 w uh, crashed into the moon surface, so it didn't actually do its job, it did crash into the surface. However, it did provide the first example of Soviet and US conjoined um, space cooperation because, of course, Luna was launched three days before Apollo, but it was going to be flying in the same area of space as Apollo was. So the Soviets and the Americans worked together to make so sure that the probe didn't collide with Apollo 11 as it was flying to the moon. So it, prov so it was the first, um, you know, it was just the first joined, um, joint effort of space um, in between the two Cold War countries, which is pretty cool. And then it la it crash-landed onto the moon um, a couple of hours before Apollo 11 departed the moon. <laughs> um, so, yeah, Apollo 11 arrived there a lot quicker than Luna, but Luna did actually crash onto the moon at the same time as astronauts were wandering around on there, which is crazy to think about. Um, anyway, as for this uh, Luna, I have just bunked it into the surface, but it's got... I think this is like the sample collector, which... Uh, is just on a thing sticking out the side of it. This was a bit of an engineering nightmare because it has a a ring around the uh, around the midsection, and then it's got various other things. However, it's come out fairly decently. It has like a little red thing on top. It has the four landing legs, um, and then yeah, just a sort of ball configuration for the bottom, which was ball with a couple of short pieces of tube in between each one. Um, but yeah, so you can with this one, you can control the arm there is no camera on it but you can move the arm up and down I think it's 45 degrees I've said it to up and down um, but of course in space it doesn't really work <laughs> it just sort of 
bounces around. Um, but yeah, so there you go. That um, that is Luna. And I just remembered that Luna isn't the only thing that I have to show off that's on the moon. I've actually got this thing, which is uh, called the the Chung, you know, the, it's something like the Chungi Four, um, which is sp spelt in English change, but with an apostrophe between the G and the E. Um, and it it's a Chinese um, Chinese rover. Uh, famous for landing on the dark side of the moon and being the first thing to land on the dark side of the moon or at least the first rover to land on the moon and transmit pictures and images back to earth so yeah here it is um it's it's a very small rover as you can see it's a little bit bigger than sojourner but f for the purpose of it i just used Sojourner's base and uh, just built off of it. So you've got the main dish on top, you've got this, I don't know what this is, maybe an antenna of some sort. You've got three little antennas at the back and then it had two, um, or rather it has two um, solar panels sticking out either either side. Um, but yeah, you can't actually drive it on the moon again because this is in space. Space, it doesn't really work. Um, you would really need to spawn the moon service on Earth and then spawn a rover to do it. But for pictures it makes, it makes a cool thing. Um, but yeah, so that's just the, the Chinese rover um, for landing on the dark side of the moon. Um, but yeah, that's enough of rovers. Um, let's move on to something else. So, ladies and gentlemen, may I present to you the International Space Station. Um, took a while to build this thing, but I've finally done it. And, well, it's the International Space Station. What, what more can you want? It's got a lot of features. It's got a lot of uh, controls. You've got the main, you've got the main uh, solar arrays on top. You've got radiators, which are these these bits here, radiators on there, and I believe these two bits are also radiators on either side. You've got the main strut here, which is where you, which is actually where you sit to spawn the creation um, and control the things. But as for the actual interior, all the crew walk around in the main section here. So I don't know what all of the modules do. I just know that this bit here is Japanese and the arm here is Canadian <laughs> um, and I believe like the back parts around here are Russian and then it's a combination of everything else um, for, ev for all the rest of it. So you've got a couple of uh, airlocks and, and docking ports, you've got one there for example, you've got uh, this one here I believe and then you've got these two for main ones and then I think at the back as well you can also connect up. Um, and yes, yeah, so you've got various laboratories, but as for the as for the solar arrays, you can adjust them left and right using steering, and then the real International Space Station, I believe, can also rotate them. So you can also rotate it up and down like so, and get it pointing to whatever direction you want. So there you go, all very lovely. Um, of course, it does it does upset the uh, upset the movement of it a bit, so it will start moving around because it's in space. It's in the zero g area, but still, there you go. So that's all the controls that you have for that. You can of course get out and you can wander around. You spawn at the very edge of the ISS there, but of course you can go inside the ISS here. Want to be in God mode because otherwise you will die. Once you actually touch a flat surface, you will be able to walk around inside of the ISS which is pretty cool because it, it's it's a bit like being in artificial gravity but not quite so yeah you can you can run around inside here there is actually lights as well let me turn them on and then get back inside the ISS there you go very bright however you know you do get lights inside of here I did add lights you've got a, a small junction section here and then you can go all the way down here to where the docking port is you can bump into the sidewall and then there you go fall onto the ground got a way up there and you've also got the way across here along this T-junction. Um, as you can see there is a seat here and that's to control the arm here of the Japanese section so you can control this using a variety of controls. It is pitched to activate the second section of the arm, it is throttle to activate the first one moving up and down then steering to move it left and right and then it's alt and throttle to move the end of the arm. But there you go so you can now perform all of your experiments in the uh, on the Japanese module here, which is a uh, which is a nice nice addition. Um, I'm pleased with how this came out because it's a bit tricky to find pictures of the ISS because it's you know in space. Not many people are taking pictures of stuff in space, <laughs> um, apart from the crews that go there, obviously. Um, but yes, yeah, so you've got that. You've also got the Canada arm, which you control from 
inside oh, inside here there you go from inside here you can control Canada arm um, I believe it's alt yeah it's alt and then all of the other controls moving up, up down left right so there you go up goes Canada arm you can adjust it outwards there you go you can also control the end out I've also added a camera onto this end just in case you wanted it <laughs> you never know the actual Canada arm I think grabs things it's like a grabber grabber arm but I didn't want to bother trying to do that so instead we can just move it move it around and then of course it's steering to move it around and then you can adjust where you want to move Canada arm wherever you want like so so there you go there's Canada arm you've also got the various bits and pieces back here and these things have also got their own solar arrays which you can of course move as well using using a uh, steering like with the others you can uh, you can adjust those as you want and of course there is oh inside here there you go there is a, a little bit of inside room to move around uh, but yeah so there you go there's the ISS um, I'm very pleased with it I think it's it's come out very well um, it's taken a while to build I did upload it uh, in bits and pieces a bit like the real one because I was working on it on and off so um, but yeah so we finally got the finished ISS um, and I will just show you something that I made up um, with a couple of my other creations here yeah so just to um, demonstrate to myself how it looks um, as you can see the the balls here have been uh, are the old versions of how I did them but I've now replaced them with the Sawyer's top module which I will show you in a separate thing um, but yeah, so as you can see, I've uh, chunked a space shuttle onto this docking area. This is not how it docks anyway, I will admit. This isn't exactly this isn't exactly how it would be. But as you can see, I've got a Soyuz uh, capsule attaching to one of the bottom docking areas. And then we've got the space shuttle on this side. And it, it just made for a cool screenshot, really. Um, it just look, sort of looks cool. Um, but yeah, that's just something I wanted to show just with the with the spaceships docked to the ISS how they would be. Um, but now let's have a closer look at the Soyuz. So the Soyuz MS is the latest line of the Soyuz aircraft, which were designed or spacecraft rather, which was designed like mid 60s by the Soviets. So this design is like 50 years old, <laughs> and and it's still just being built upon and built upon. And up until recently, it was the only way of getting crews to the ISS, including American astronauts, after the after the um, stoppage of the space shuttle program because up until then of course America could just shoot up space shuttles with new crews into the ISS um, perfectly fine but then after the space shuttle program was shut down the Soyuz was the only way for the Americans to get their astronauts to the ISS which is ironic considering this is a Russian aircraft or spacecraft and considering you know the space race was between the Soviets aka the communist Russians and and the Americans um, but yeah here we go Soyuz, we've just got the Russian flag on there. You've got a couple of uh, dishes on the side. You've got solar solar panels on the side. It actually splits up into three different sections. You've got the front ball section, which is um, holds a bunch of I think equipment. It also holds like the toilet as well. You've got the main mid section, which is where the which is where the pilot sits. There are three seats in here, like the real one. You can fit three people in Soyuz. And so you've got sort of like the midsection, and then you've got the bottom section, which is basically engines, power, etc., etc. And when it comes down, only the midsection comes back into Earth. The others burn up, I believe, when it re-enters. Um, in this case, I don't have staging again. However, I have got a window was added in the front of Sawyer so that they can see. And I've tried to do it through here, but because of the way that I've had to mount the... <laughs> due to the way I've had to mount this to this you can't see out of it anymore <laughs> even though I have set it all to glass um, yeah there's there's no way you're seeing through that but the idea is there um, but yeah there's Sawyer's not really much too more to say about it you can't control it in any way it doesn't move uh, it is again just a static prop type thing but it at least looks like Sawyer's should and of course you can rotate it around and connect it up to whatever you wanted um, whatever you wanted to do so yeah there's Sawyer's so the next thing we've got here, the second to last thing rather, is the Automated Transfer System, aka the ATV, which is a European Space Agency thing, which is fully automated, so even though I am sitting, actually no, I'm not even sitting in here, I did actually 
suit you outside of it. So yeah, inside of here we've got there you go, radio control receiver for brick rigs. Um, but yeah, this thing would be shot into into space towards the ISS loaded with supplies. It would arrive at the ISS, it would be automatically docked by itself. It would dock into the ISS, the crew would take out all of the supplies from inside of it, fill it with rubbish, and then it would burn up upon re-entry into the atmosphere again, um, taking all of the rubbish etc etc with it. A uh, very simple design, there's not much detailing on it. There isn't much details that I could point that I could uh, fish out from the real one, so yeah, I've just sort of left it as a funny cylinder sort of thing. It does have this sort of X Wing type um, solar array setup, which is what I've got here. You've also got the docking port on here, and yeah, not much too much to say about it. This thing has stopped being used though. They, the I, the U, um, sorry, ESA has stopped using this thing. They're planning on maybe making a crude version of it to try and. I don't know, send people to the ISS maybe, but otherwise, um, yeah, you can play around with the solar arrays at least, and you can hook it up to the ISS if you wanted. But yeah, there's not much to more, more to say about this. And the final thing I have to show you today is the Mir space station. M-I-R is how it's spelt, and it's a Soviet-slash-Russian space station which lasted until 2001, at which point it was deorbited and broke apart and fell into the fell into the uh, ocean somewhere. <laughs> Any bits that didn't break up fell into the Pacific somewhere. Um, but yeah, so this thing, it was the first um, moduled space station. Um, you have seven total parts of it. You have the main central module here. You've got this module, that, 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 and that. Um, and then a central ball area here. This thing here is for the space shuttles to dock, um, because as part of the shuttle Mir project between the Soviets and later Russians and the Americans, it was you know just a general sort of combination between the two of them, and so the Americans came up with this thing because it was a bit of a pain trying to move various modules in order to allow the big shuttle to dock with Mir. So the Americans came up with this thing, which just allowed enough height between Mir, Mir's solar panels, and the space shuttle to dock safely without any problems. Um, but yeah, here we go, here is Mir. It took a bit of a while. There's not as much detail as the ISS because there's not as many pictures of Mir. Because, there's, because the ISS has been around for like 30 years and something like 30 plus countries have been to it and there are various satellites now going around taking pictures of it and of course crews going up and down take pictures of the ISS which means that there's a lot more um, a lot more reference material so that I can build up the ISS. But Mir wasn't as much. Um, so it is a bit more lacklustre in terms of in terms of identity. However, I did manage to get some bits and pieces on. These are a couple of solar panels which are not fully extended because they would collide with these solar panels. You've got various balls and um, balls and scientific equipment on here. You've got the main central sort of junction. Uh, I suppose you could say you've got the big satellite dish up top, you've got the power module, I know that this is the power module because it's got the four solar arrays on it, and all of these solar arrays can be moved independently of one another. I did have to do a bit of engineering, especially with this solar array and this solar array. These ones were generally simple to do after I'd figured out how to do them. Um, yeah, this one was a bit of an engineering nightmare to do, and this one just took a little bit of fancy, uh, fancy building. But yeah, so as you can see, you can adjust these. All of them use the same controls, which is steering, and there's seats in all of the modules which have these solar arrays, so you can adjust them like so. There is also lights inside of it. Um, if I go back to the driver, there you go. As you can see, there are lights in all of these modules all the ones that you can sit in at least. The power module, you can adjust these solar arrays as well to point towards the sun, which is all very nice. Adjust that. You can't adjust the radar dish. I mean, you can if you wanted to. I should probably change that because otherwise you can just put it into itself. Whoops, I didn't check that. <laughs> um, it was late at night that I was doing it all right. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so there's that. You can also sit in this little area as well, back here not too much space but you have got a rear docking area here and again you can adjust this solar array as well. I do like how these turned out, these turned out pretty great. Um, 
but yeah so you can just adjust these as you want and I will just show you one final thing with Mir um, where I hooked up a space shuttle to the space shuttle adapter so yeah there you go that's a bit like how it would look um, space shuttle is of course docked to Mir from the bottom and then if you don't want it at the bottom you can use the orbital thrusters on the space shuttle to uh, adjust it up and down well rather more up but there you go and then of course we're in single player so I can simply just press pause and there you go the shuttle is now sideways attached to Mir <laughs> so yeah you can uh, use the shuttle a bit bit trickily there but still that's just how a bit how it would look give you a taste of how the real shuttle would have looked on the real Mir um, but yeah so there you go those are all of the space uh, things that I had to show I hope you enjoyed them um, those are all my space things for now. Um, I've been doing a lot of building on brick rigs recently, so I'm probably going to take a take a break from building on brick rigs for a bit. Um, but yeah, so there you go. I hope you enjoyed them. I hope you enjoyed the uh, space stations, especially because they're the things that I'm probably the most proud of. Um, the rovers are good, but the space stations are big projects, and they did take a uh, a lot of engineering went into them to figure out how to do them most efficiently. But yeah, so I hope you enjoyed them uh, and goodbye.